That was beautiful. Thank you. Good morning, church. My name. Good morning. Uh, my name is Caitlin Nesbitt. I'm the associate pastor here at Faith. We're so excited you're here to worship with us in person as well as online this morning. Pastor Caleb is away this weekend. He and his family are squeezing in one more vacation before back to school time. So we wish them a time of rejuvenation and a time when they're away. You can also see him right up there saying hi <laughs> for all of us this morning. If you're worshiping with us online, if you will take a moment and fill out our online connection card, you can find that on our church webpage. If you're here in person, we have your attendance from when you walked in, but if you would like to share with us a prayer request, our online um, virtual connection card is a way to share a prayer request as well. So if you'd like to pull that up on your phone and fill that out, you're welcome to as well at this time. We ask those who are worshiping online at home to do that too. Um, if you are worshiping with children this morning, welcome. We do have faith kids later in our service. Our children's director, Kim Clifton, always puts together a fun faith kids, as well as a Sunday school program that will begin after service. It should be up right now, actually, on our Facebook, as well as our YouTube pages. They're super fun. They're meant for kids, but they're really fun for adults, too. So I would recommend checking those out for our Sunday school lesson. Also following our service, we have what we call the Taste of Faith. It's a time for fellowship. We don't meet together in person like we have in the past. Instead, we meet via Zoom. And so at 1230, there will be a link on our Facebook page as well as on our website if you would like to join us for a Zoom conversation for our Taste of Faith. All right, at this time, we're going to move into our opening hymn. As a reminder, for those of us worshiping here in the sanctuary, we ask that you refrain from singing out loud. You can snap, clap, hum, wiggle around, and worship that way, but we do ask that you refrain from singing. If you're at home, you're welcome to sing loud and proud. That's just something in the sanctuary we're asking. All right, we'll go ahead and begin our opening song. Boys and girls, I'm coming to you today from the car wash. As you can see, my window's getting all foggy. And I was thinking, sometimes our life is like what my window looks like right now. It's hard to see out of, right? Sometimes we, we get so worried about things and bogged down by problems, we can't see out our window. And it's kind of scary. We can't see what, what the future holds for us, and it makes us nervous. It's going to clean my window, right? This car wash is going to clean my window, and I'm going to come out in just a minute, and it's going to be crystal clear, and I'll be able to see. And that's just like having Jesus in our life, right? When we have Jesus in our life, he gives us a clear path. He shows us the way. He makes it easy for us to see our future. Boys and girls, we just got through the car wash, and if you look out my window right now, it's nice and clear. I can see out my window in just 
just like when we have Jesus, he gives us a clear path. Have a wonderful week. Bye-bye. I feel like Kim is very influential in my life. Last week I wanted ice cream. This week I'm reminded that I need to get a car wash. So <laughs> whatever she's doing seems very relatable to me. Um, at this time we'll enter into prayer. If you are worshiping online with us and you have a prayer that you would like to have lifted, you are welcome to comment that on the Facebook page. I'll try to keep an eye out on that. There's a little bit of a delay, so I might miss it. But if you comment, I'll try to keep that up. Um, some who have requested prayers, we have prayers being requested by Marla Smith for her brother Ron. He had a procedure on Friday, so we continue to lift up Ron in prayer. Also prayers requested from Alice Mossman for the family of her neighbor Mike, who had died suddenly. So prayers for his family as well as for his friends. We have prayers requested from John and Sharla Parker, prayers for John's dad, Ray Parker, as he faces life without his wife of 61 years. So prayers for Ray. We also have prayers requested by Nancy Clemenson for Jeff, her niece's husband, who was diagnosed with lymphoma. So prayers for Jeff as well as his family. We also um, celebrated the life of Misty, M Nikki Sturski on Friday. Her family had a small service at the Abraham Lincoln Memorial. So they had a, a small service, just family. We'll have another service at a later date for Mickey, but we did lift and celebrate Mickey um, Friday. All right, I am not seeing anything. So we will enter into our time of prayer. Um, I will offer us a pastoral prayer, and then I will invite you to pray in your mind as well as in your heart the Lord's Prayer. We're going to ask that you refrain from um, praying out loud, but do invite you to be in a spirit of prayer. If you're at home, you're welcome to pray out loud and say that with us as well. Let us in turn to prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we give thanks to you. You are the source of our fruit. You offer us the chance to live fruitful lives. You offer us goodness in all that we face in life. You remain faithful. We confess that we often do not bear these fruits as much as we should. Remind us once again of this fruit that you place within us. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our nation, for the leaders of all nations. As we continue to adapt to this pandemic, we ask that you bless our leaders with the wisdom only you can provide. As schools decide how to best return in fall, we ask that you grant us patience and goodness towards those who are navigating these uncharted waters. We give you thanks for all of those who dedicate their lives to the well-being of others. And we give you thanks for the gift of your church, for this opportunity that we have to gather together today, meeting in person as well as online. We ask that you call us to be a part of the work that the Holy Spirit is doing beyond all walls. Lord, we lift up to you those who are struggling to make ends meet, those who are currently without a job and seeking employment. We lift up to you those who are without a home and are unsure of where they will find their next meal. Use us to be a part of the care that you offer to all of your children in need. Lord, you are a great healer. We lift up to your children across the world who are fighting COVID. We lift up to you all who are facing illness, or recovering from procedures and surgeries. And we lift up to you all who are grieving at this time. May your presence be a comfort in the midst of loss. Lord, we lift up to you those whose names we have read out loud this morning and those who we now name in our hearts during a moment of silence. And now let us join together, those of us who are here in person, in our hearts and in our minds, those who are at home, joining and saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Good morning. Today's first scripture reading is from Galatians, chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. Today's second Bible reading is from Ruth, chapter 1, verses 16 through 18. But Ruth said, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus, and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. these intros they make me feel like I'm about to star in a movie it's like building up something epic is about to happen all right so this week we are in our second to last week of our current sermon series the fruitful life throughout the series we have been exploring what it looks like to bear fruits of a fruitful life and so next week pastor Caleb will wrap up this series and then starting in two weeks we will begin our new sermon series, Lessons from Mr. Rogers, which will be a really interesting series. I can't wait to get it started. Um, we hope you continue to worship with us throughout that series, whether it's in person or online. Um, I have to admit, I don't recall ever watching Mr. Rogers as a kid, but in the past two years, I have watched so much Mr. Rogers as sermon prep. I feel like I have this old friend that we're going to be visiting in the next series, so I'm really excited about it. It's going to be a good one. But today we'll be talking again about the fruitful life, so let us pray and begin. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for the fruits that you put into our lives. And we ask that at this time you open our hearts to wherever it is that you are nudging us to go, that your word rests on us. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, so throughout the series, we have been taking a closer look at what it means to live the good life. And so we spent some time um, exploring our early history in church and how Paul would answer that. How it, and Paul, how, answer, how Paul would answer what a fruitful life is. And so his answer would be to live a life that is led by the Spirit. And this is an answer that we still offer today, is one that our faith would still say today. And lucky for us, Paul doesn't just say, live a life led by the Spirit, leave it there, go on, good luck. He gives us some examples of what this looks like when we are living a life that is led by the Spirit. And so these examples are the fruits that we find in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. And they're also the fruits that we have been working on memorizing throughout this series. So now we are going to work on our weekly memorization practice. Got to do it every week. Um, we'll see up on the screen our scripture verse, and we'll go ahead. If you're in person, we just ask that you read it in your mind instead of out loud. You're afraid from speaking out loud. If you're at home, we invite you to say these words out loud, but we'll read together Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. All right, so we're going to take away the words on the screen, and we're going to test out memorization. So hopefully you have these memorized. Go ahead and again try to say them with me. I don't have them memorized, so I'm going to read them. We still got one more week. All right, um, so let's read this again. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, 
patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. All right, did anyone have it memorized? I've got one in the back. My husband's a showboater in the back. He also has it memorized. I do not have it memorized. We got one more week, y'all. We're just procrastinating. It's okay. We'll still get it done right under the wire. So in the past few weeks, we have taken a closer look into love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. Today, we're going to be looking closer into generosity or goodness and faithfulness. And so one of the bi biblical figures who is best known for her goodness and her faithfulness is Ruth, our girl Ruth. Ruth is one of the women in the Bible who is actually given a name, which is really significant and shows how important she is, because often women in the Bible are not given names, but instead referred to how their association is to the men around them. So this societal norm of her um, breaking that and actually getting a name is really big, and it shows uh, just how great of a character and biblical figure she is. So Ruth's story, it actually doesn't begin with Ruth. It begins with her mother-in-law, Naomi. During a time of famine, Naomi and her husband and their two sons, they leave Bethlehem, and they travel in search of better land, and so they stay in Moab. And here they settle down, and they build a life for themselves, including their two sons marrying Moabite women, um, which is actually a really significant point because before Ruth, the book of Ruth, and yes, our girl Ruth has her own book. She is that big of a biblical figure. Um, before this, we have the book of Judges. And so throughout Judges, we see this cycle of people disobeying and straying away from God and then God calling them back, and then straying and disobey, and that's what we see throughout Judges. And one of the ways that they do this is by entering into um, non-Jewish land and wearing women who are not of the Jewish faith as well. And so here we learn that Ruth, um, in Ruth we learn that Naomi's sons both married non-Jewish women, which is a significant point in understanding Ruth's background. So then tragedy strikes for Naomi, and her husband and both of her sons die. So with nothing left, she decides to return home. And it's at this point in the story that I'm always really grateful that I live in this century and not back in history. Because at this time, women weren't allowed to have things for themselves. Everything they had was based on the main male figure in their life, typically their husband or their father. So Naomi, who lost her husband, lost her sons, has no one to care for her, decides to re return back to Judea. So during her journey. She reveals to her two daughters, she relieves them of any duties that they have towards her, and she urges them to return home and find new husbands. So she really gives them an option to go home, restart over in their lives. So she no longer, Naomi, no longer has anything to give to them. She has no sort of security to offer them to build a new life. And this is a pretty common practice. When a woman marries into a family, they become a part of that family, they leave their old family. And if there are no men in this new family for them to marry or to care for them, they are able to return home and attempt to find a new husband. So one of Naomi's daughter-in-laws, she does just that. And really, it's not hard to see why she did that. During this time period, if you are a widow without a family to care for you, you live a life of begging. There's no security or support. There's no way for you to earn a living. Really, you're dependent on your family caring for you. And if you don't have that, you have to beg on the streets. So this means that both, uh, if both of her daughter-in-laws leave, Naomi is alone without anyone to care for her, except for this possibility of a distant relative who might take pity on her. And that's where Naomi is heading to see if she can stay with him. So still, in the face of all of this, Ruth decides to stay with Naomi. Naomi continues to plead with Ruth to return home, but Ruth is firm in her decision to not abandon her mother-in-law. And we hear Ruth's response in our second scripture reading today. Ruth says, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well if even death parts me from you. So this is an extremely powerful statement that we have by Ruth of loyalty. 
Ruth remains loyal to Naomi, knowing that this road that they are going down, it's going to be tough. It's not going to be an easy journey that they're on. And even though she's given this guilt-free out where she can leave, she decides to stay by Naomi's side. And what's incredibly interesting to me is that Ruth says, your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. And so if you remember, I was just talking about how in Judges, we have this book full of people disobeying God. We have the cycle of people disobeying God. And the, there is this problem with marrying women who are not Jewish. But the problem isn't necessarily marrying people who are non-Jewish. It's the idea that when that happens, the family will begin to commit apostasy because they will worship the gods that are not Yahweh, not Jewish God. And then the families will also worship these gods, and they will stray away from God as a result. So that's the concern that happens there. But what we find in Ruth is she proves that she's not only loyal to Naomi, she's also loyal, loyal to Naomi's God. And she refuses to leave her in her moment of need and dedicates herself to Yahweh. So this outsider, um, someone who we have just spent an entire book thinking we should stay away from, proves this true testament of loyalty, this true testament of goodness, bears these fruits out into the world, and stays with Naomi. And Ruth gives up her people, gives up her gods for Naomi. So this is huge. This is one of those no going back type of statements that the fact that it is included in our Bible shows how much Ruth was able to influence and change the world around her at the time period and the perceptions that were placed on her before she be even began. It's a testament to her goodness, a testament to her loyalty. So Ruth's decision in this story, it parallels that of God in our lives. When the going gets tough, God doesn't back down or abandon us. Instead, God, through God's goodness, we are claimed by God again and again and again. And this is where we find our first fruit. So goodness or generosity. If you looked at our sermon title for today and thought, wait, hold on, Caitlin. You made me memorize this scripture, and goodness is nowhere in the scripture that we've been memorizing for weeks now. You are correct. It is not in that scripture. We've been looking at the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. It's one of the translations. If you look at the NIV or the New International Version of this, um, the scripture, it includes goodness rather than generosity. It swaps out those two words. So there are two reasons we went with goodness for this series. First, Pastor Caleb had memorized the NIV translation, so that was just what was in his head when he created the series. So just a very practical um, reasoning there. And the second is because using goodness, I think, helps us understand what is meant by generosity here. Generosity, it means to be liberal in giving. And I think we often associate generosity with the physical gifts that we actually give, these tangible things, which is a giving of sorts. It is one way of showing goodness and generosity. It's there are tithes through donating to VBS or food or other items to the church. These are all signs of generosity. Yet what we find here, this translation to the word being used as goodness, it says a little bit more. On one hand, our goodness, it's this generosity we live or we give liberally. On the other hand, it's a call for how we liberally give of ourselves. It's a lifestyle, a way that we give. When we are generous with our very lives, dedicating them to this fruit of goodness, and that's when we cultivate this life that the Holy Spirit is calling us towards. So we see this in Ruth. Later, after she and Naomi return to Judea, Ruth becomes known for her goodness. Others notice that she did not, or others notice what she did for Naomi. And Ruth dedicating her life to Naomi, it was done out of loyalty. And we'll get there, loyalty will be in a minute. But it was also done out of Ruth's goodness, staying with Naomi in her time of need. She could not bear to abandon her mother-in-law. And so even though it completely derails Ruth's chances for what society would deem as a good life, for what was expected of her, Ruth decides to dedicate herself to caring for Naomi by putting Naomi before herself. And it's her goodness that shines through when the going gets tough here. So how we devote ourselves, how we devote our lives, it's really important to bearing this fruit of goodness, this fruit of the Spirit. By, by devoting ourselves to God's goodness, known in the world around us, that's how we share this fruit. So the second part, so the second fruit that we are looking at is faithfulness. 
So Ruth is the picture of faithfulness in the Bible, besides Jesus. I feel like Jesus is, you know, the picture of all of these. But besides that, Ruth is the picture of faithfulness in the Bible. Ruth's refusal to give up on Naomi and instead her decision to dedicate her life further to Naomi is an act of faithfulness that resembles her own relationship with God. So when facing the unknown with Naomi, instead this future that looks rather bleak if she looks to what she knows is before her, Ruth moves forward with assurance. She doesn't doubt her decision. She doesn't doubt her relationship with Naomi. She doesn't balk at what is before them because her faith in her dedication is to Naomi, this faithfulness she has towards her. And it's much like the faithfulness that we have towards God. When the going gets tough, when we lose our job, when we or someone we love falls ill, when we lose someone that we love, when life becomes too difficult of a storm to really see the way out of it when we're in the middle, that's when we know that we have God beside us. That's when God's faithfulness shines through. God is as dedicated to us as Ruth is to Naomi. And bearing the fruit of faithfulness means that we have the same dedication to God, and as a result, we have the same dedication to one another. When I think of faithfulness and what to do and what not to do, I think of Job's friends. Uh, when Job's life goes haywire, he loses everything. He loses his job, his family, his health. Jo Job's friends then pay him a visit. And at first they sit with him. They sit beside him. They grieve with him. They are present in the midst of his loss, in the midst of his darkest days. They are there with him. But soon they go grow tired of his grief. They urge him to admit what he did wrong and ask for God's forgiveness because there is no way that God would be punishing someone this badly if he hadn't done something wrong. And instead of continuing to prioritize Job, they become exhausted with the work that it takes to remain loyal and turn their back on him. So it started as this great example of how to support someone you love when they are walking through that valley of shadows becomes this how-to guide of what not to do. In this story, it's so fitting for faithfulness because it requires this commitment to the long haul. When we bear the fruit of faithfulness towards God, we are reflecting that God's faithfulness towards us and all that we face, that we're in it together for the long haul. And when we bear that with one another, we commit to one another to be there in those times where there is celebration and there is joy, but also in those times when things get tough and to remain there in the midst of that beyond when it is convenient for us, beyond when we think is the appropriate amount of time, being faithful, it reminds that we continue to turn back to God and that we continue to remind one another of that faithfulness again and again and again, and trusting that in no matter what, God has not and God will not abandon us. Let us pray and close our time. Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks for your fruit of goodness. We give you thanks for your goodness that you pour into our lives. And we give you thanks for your faithfulness to us. We ask that you use us to bear that goodness out into the world, that you remind us of this call that we have to be faithful to you and also faithful to one another. We ask that you, we are beacons of this grace that you offer. We ask this in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, as we continue our service, we will do so by offering communion. So you, when you walked in, you should have gotten one of these little cups. If you did not raise your hand, an usher or a communion steward will be sure to bring one to you. Um, if you did get one, if you want to pull it out, we're going to hold it and um, say a prayer while we're holding it over our communion elements. Just as a note for those of you who are worshiping at home, whenever we have communion over the weekends, we also offer drive through communion. So if you don't feel ready to come to church but would like communion, we offer a contact-free way to receive communion. So we had that last night. We will have it again the beginning of next month, that first weekend on that Saturday. All right, so for those of us here, we'll hold up our elements and we'll say a prayer over our communion elements. Let us pray. Lord, it is right and joyful, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. You created us to bear good fruit. And even when our love failed, your love, it remained steadfast. You remained faithful to us. You refused to give up on us, even when everyone else gave up on us, 
even when we gave up on ourselves. And at the right time in history, you came to walk among us the pers- as the person of Jesus Christ, who embodied the fullness of your goodness, of your grace. He healed the sick, ate with sinners, welcomed the outcasts, and he proclaimed that the time had come when you would save your people. And on the night when he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Lord, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts, we ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on those of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, so just as a little note, um, this is a, there's two layers here to open. On the top, there's this really thin plastic layer, which you're going to open for the wafer that's on the top of the cup. So this is the body of Christ that is broken for you. And then there's the tin foil layer that will open for the juice. And so the cup of grace that is offered for us. All right. Just one more note about communion before we continue. We'll ask that you take your little empty cup and there is garbages on your way out. If you'll remember to place that into the garbage as you're leaving the sanctuary. Okay. At this time, we'll move into our offering. Um, Offering looks a little different now with our safety concerns. We don't pass the plates. If you are here in person and you have a prepared offering, there are offering plates on the way out next to the doors. If you'll place that into our offering plates. Um, We do also encourage that you give online. It is a great way to be able to safely give. If you're worshiping online, that is a way that you can also be giving at this time, as well as sending in any gifts or tithes to the church. Offering, it's something that we always do as an opportunity, never an obligation. We don't give because we have to. We give in response to God's faithfulness in our lives. And when we see that, that is where um, that giving comes from. So a few words about other ministries that we have here at Faith. Um, Pre-registration is our first one. So for those of you who are here, thank you for pre-registering and joining us in person worship. If you are at home and you would like to join us in person, we do have pre-registration for throughout the week for our worship services. It starts Monday 9 a.m. As long as there are no computer glitches, it's up on the website at 9 a.m. If you are having trouble, we ask that you do it yourself, but if you are having trouble, you can call in the church office and we'll be sure to help you out with pre-registration. Second, we have an upcoming blood drive starting August 2nd, which is today through the 8th from 11.30 to 2.30. We are hosting a blood drive at Versetti Tinley Park Blood Donation Center. So instead of having it at the church, we'll be having it at the Blood Donation Center. There's more information about that on the website as well as in your bulletin if you'd like to give the gift of life by donating blood. Third, um, worship volunteers. Can we have a hand for all of our awesome worship volunteers this morning? It's, it takes a lot to have a worship service running between all of the AV that's happening and all of our new safety features for those of us who are worshiping in person. So we give thanks for all who have dedicated their time. If you would like to become a worship volunteer, whether that be a greeter, an usher, um, we ask that you call into the church, let us know where it is that you would like to volunteer, and we'll be sure to plug you in. All right, so let us join together in prayer over our offerings. Let us pray. Lord, all that we have, it is a gift from you. We give back to you just a portion of what you have given to us. We ask that you use these gifts to be examples of your goodness, to be evidence of your faithfulness, and help us who have gathered here for worship to bear the spiritual fruit that blesses others and honors you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
All right, so at this point, we are going to move into our closing song. Just a reminder, if you are here in the sanctuary with us, we ask that you don't sing out loud. You can hum, you can wiggle, you can clap, you can snap. But as a safety feature, we just ask that you don't sing out loud. If you are at home, you're welcome to sing as well with our closing hymn. So let's rise together and join in our closing hymn. the blind to see, and then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal me broken spirit, and somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory, oh victory in Jesus, my Savior. streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story, and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory, oh victory in Jesus, my Savior. All right, just a note of instruction before we exit. For those of us here in the sanctuary, I'm going to exit first. If you will wait until the ushers come and release you from your pew, so you can stand and wait, you can sit and wait, however it is that you want to wait, but if you'll please wait for the ushers. Also remember your little communion packet. Be sure to take that into one of the garbages on your way out down that center aisle. Just be sure to remember this to throw it away. All right, if you are in person, if you will show signs of love or peace to your neighbor, if you're at home, if you'll turn to someone around you or comments, God loves you and so do I. 
that is that goodness, that is that faithfulness that we share with one another, that goodness and that faithfulness that God places as fruits in our lives. So may we go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.